Giro d'Italia 2017 Stage 9. More, more and more footage is coming up from the Giro, which we absolutely love to see. We've got, this is the stage that Garrett Thomas crashed, Lando crashed, Yates crashed, motorbike on the side of the road. Anyway, it's a big climb, 12.5k, probably a little bit longer to be fair, up to Blockhouse. Here's Garrett Thomas who got, who crashed, there was a police motorbike, everyone sort of crashed into it. Um, it is what it is, but what we're going to see today is Nara Quintana going absolutely full up this climb and putting everyone in the bin. The last time really in sort of a grand tour stage, um, when he was still in GC contention, that he really put everyone in the bin. Um, in my opinion, it was probably one of his best climbing performances. Um, I can't remember what the van numbers were exactly from the day, but I know they were high. Obviously, Yates is getting spat. Well, not getting spat. He's coming and trying to get back on because he had a he got stopped behind a crash. I'm not sure he did actually go down. Um, Garen Thomas obviously had to ban the race after the time trial, which was the following day. Um, oh, no, sorry. It was a rest day, then then time trial, which Garen Thomas came second to Tom de Milan in. Um, at the moment, we have Bob Youngles in the in the pink jersey in the Mario Rosa. And um, obviously, he did a good TT. He split in the crosswind. There was a good crosswind section. Um, on about stage four or five, but anyway, you can see most of what left one uh, lost one rider. Young is getting spat, but he's just riding tempo. He knows he wants that white leader's jersey, wants a top 10, and he knows the way the only person who's going to take him off is Yates, who's like minutes behind, so he's just going to ride full. Um, but you know, at his own tempo, it's a pretty steep climb. His average is about nine percent. Pelizotti for um, for Nibali is getting dropped in, in Bahrain Marini kit. Um, we also got a Stana boy getting spat as well. I don't believe Miguel Angel Lopez is is here. Correct me if I'm wrong. Formula is running for Cannondale. He's also pretty solid. Um, a lot of, there's the uh, GC, so Pots of Evo, Nibli, Yates, Thomas. Um, so yeah, you know, the, the usual boys are all up there. Pots of Evo, this is when he was really, really good. Um, I still think he's completely underrated as a rider. He, the number of top 10 jury stages he got, um, positions sorry, he got. Uh, this is Sebas and Al sorting out Garrett Thomas with the lead out, but um, just have some patience, have some patience, kids. Uh, and Aaron Quintana is going to set it off. Um, you can see, like, it's, it's, a, it's steep, but they're still motoring on. They're still going, you know, 20k an hour or so. Um, but he's about 2 minutes 40 back, so he's not going to get back on um, because a 2 minute 40 deficit doesn't matter how fresh you are. You've got teammates, you're not making 2 minutes 40 on absolute flying Naomi Quintana. Um, We've also got Sebastian Reichen back for uh, FDJ. We've got Thibaut Pino. We've got Ilno Zakarin. Um, obviously, Nibali's there. Uh, Formolo, Pots of Evo, De Moulin. De Moulin just like he was tying his shoes there or something. Um, this is Wiener Anacono front, then Nara Quintana, then uh, Andre Amador. Kreisbeck, the guy's got the world's largest shoulders. Um, he's he's sorting out because he's sorting the numbers here 360s, 400s, about 6 watts per kilo ish in the wheels. Um, which is sort of what we expect on one of these stages. I don't think it was a super hard stage from memory. Um, there's Zacharine getting spat, jersey open as always, and uh, looking like an absolute state on the bike. But that man can push some watts, that's for sure. Did get busted for ste uh, steroids, I think it was, when he was 18. Not ideal. Um, but yeah, he was looking pretty good 2016 year as well before he lobbed himself off the side of a mountain. It was the same one that Christwhite crashed on as well. I think that's Formula there just getting spat as well um, for riding road for Cannondale. Uh, pots of you a second wheel, but Quintana just getting the boys to set a good tempo. Um, you'll see in a minute that um, it's pretty windy on the day. Uh, they do a bit of crosswind action. Um, obviously, everyone's on the right hand side of the road now, but it's not as strong as it was. Um, Quintana, you can really see it starts to echelon a bit more now, which is sort of weird on a climb, but it is what it is. Amador didn't look that strong today, um, while Wiener Anacona was looking unbelievable. He's really trying to gutter everyone, put Quintana in the absolute perfect position. Guys like struggling. You can see his cadence really isn't that good compared to everyone else. Um, Balcon Mollema is there, obviously, the perennial seventh. Um, he absolutely loves that spot on the GC, uh, but he's, you know, he's always solid. So, we, you know, we've resumed the forward quite a lot, 7k to go, pretty steep climb. This is Quintana Specialist. There was a, don't think, as I said earlier, a climb before, and he does seem to enjoy these stages where it's just one climb, you go full up it, and he's he normally delivers. Um, obviously, this season, he's been absolutely unbelievable. Thibaut Pino on this, in this Giro is looking really good, same with Nibali. Nibli obviously won the Giro before this in 2016. Um, it was a pretty, pretty solid Giro. Did enjoy that uh, a lot. Um, very, very controversial with the whole crashing situation with St Stephen Kreuzberg. Um, but yeah, De Moulin, we know how he rides. He just rides tempo. Um, and, you know, it, it is what it is. Um, you can see the pace they're going is not mental because they've only put 37 seconds into um, into the old man, Young Gors, who's I think we're about to see in a minute. But Quintana decides it's go. We sort of lost it, but Quintana attack. Nibali decides to do a bit of aero TT position. Like, look at this. He's, I, 
I think he got in super into aero this year. This is the year he won San Remo as well, and he was loving his aero bikes and all the rest of it, and seemed to just think getting aero is class. The uh, French commentators were saying a lot about him uh, putting his hands on us like a time trialist. Uh, ne um, as you can see, too, with Pino, he doesn't enjoy the hot weather, taking off his jersey. Quintana just is an absolute monster at this point. He's just, you know, still drilling it, not full, but uh, decent enough to hurt hurt the guys behind and also hurt the people who are um, trying to get across to him. But it comes a bit of cat mousing, and Pino goes past. Uh, Quintana's straight onto that, looks so easy. You can see Nibali's already struggling. He's already not looking in top, top condition. Um, while them two are really looking quite explosive. It's a fast bit of the climb. You know, be going 25 to 30 kilometers an hour at this point, I reckon. Um, maybe a little bit slower, but you know, it, it's it's very draftable. Um, even at 18 to 20k an hour, I I think you can feel a, a draft um, like based on when I ride and the data seems like you can a little bit, not much, but enough to make it sort of easier to sit in the wheel. But if you look at the sort of gearing now in the back, the 39, like 23 or something, 25, so that's pretty pretty rapid at um, sort of 90 cadence or whatever. So, you know, they're not hanging around at all. They're still doing decent turns. Like, obviously, they're not going full. Um, I mean, if you if you know what how they climb, it's normally attack, 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 make it hardish. Um, you can see, I think this is uh, Anacona getting dropped, um, and Amador's just there, quite as behind. Balcom Molema did a pretty solid race, same with Demon just rode tempo, which, well not tempo, but just rode full, um, but didn't attack, same, them to end up catching Nibli actually, um, and then obviously we all know why we're here, um, we're, we're all going to see this Quintana attack, and it's, it's one of the most, um, one, one of the best, best performances in a Grand Tour really, and I think, you know, he was super lucky, what's Nibli doing, he's like, he's just like running a TT or something, Positive Evo again, very, he knows he's not going to be able to outclimb some of these boys, so he just rides tempo, just sit on Dumoulin, you know Dumoulin's just going to ride, you know, that's probably six watts per kilo-ish, and just ride full on that. Um, these boys like to do a bit more attacking, you know, this is the, because they need to put time into Dumoulin, because Dumoulin has, you know, a 30k TT, um, no, I think it was 40k TT the day after the, day after the rest day, um, and then there's another like 30k one on the last day, so, you know, that's sort of three or four minutes virtually, he's ahead of these guys, so they need to put time into him, but obviously, you know, the other guys know that they're not going to be able to beat, um, win necessarily, or outclimb these boys, so just you know, uh, sort of mismatch their losses, count their losses as much as possible. But here comes Quintana. He's literally uh, motivating that that motorbike a lot. But, you know, it's nothing's really going to come of it. You can see this, the elastic isn't slap. Nibali's going to grind him back and, um, you know, he's going to get back on. I mean, if you watch these races, it's always the point mentally. It's not necessarily mental. I mean, it's more physical. But when the point when they decide, I'm not going to chase him, flip the elbow. And if the guy doesn't attack straight across, then that's it. Like that momentum's gone, but Nibali was like, you know, I can close this gap. I'm gonna close this gap, so he closes the gap. And Quintana knows that, so he doesn't waste energy. So it's such a mental thing. But it's like what you'll see is that like when Quintana goes, is that when he attacks, it's sort of like they'll be in the air like venga, 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 no, like come on, go. And he'll then he'll just launch it a little bit more, and that really cracks people mentally. And then you know that the gap's created, and then you can tell Quintana's a stronger rider because the number of times he's attacking. So as soon as he gets away, then you know it's gonna happen. So he goes again here. Um, but it's not really a full full attack to be honest and you can see the boys i oh know this could be it actually i think this is it i think this is it yeah this is right around the corner sorry it was a full attack you were on the corner you would have got told venga 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 boys now you've got a gap and then we look behind and everyone's just pino's just leaning on nibli as much as possible and nibli's really trying to close this gap and it's it's not looking like you will to be honest um but yeah sorry i was right this wasn't the, the final one so um Nibali still is just thinking, I can close this gap, I can close this gap. And Quintana looks like, you know, he's trying, obviously, he's, he's going pretty hard at this point. Um, but Nibali's convinced that he's going to close this gap. He's gritting his teeth, Pino's gripping his teeth. But again, Quintana gets away, and that's the final one. That little dig there, do you see, though? It was like he was away, Quintana, um, Valverde, not Valverde, Nibali was about to catch him. And he kicks once more, and it looks like he's away again. And this is the thing, it's the mental crack. If you kick multiple times, psychologically, that's really hard to to go because you're like I'm about to catch him but if he's riding you know 95% that does a little surge just a tiny bit above and then that's it Pino's on the limit can't get round um and that's it Quintana's just on planet Zork now and he's just flying and we'll get told in the year you know just ride full to the climb because now he doesn't need to surge you can just ride that you know as hard as he can for the last four kilometers and he knows he's stronger than them he's no easy he needs to get the gap and he's you know hopefully um, for him, he'll get in the Malia Rosa if he puts in a big enough delivery. He's not doing 477 watts, um, I can assure you of that, because he only weighs about 55, 56 kilos or something, and um, he's not holding that the whole way to the climb, but the gap still isn't that large, Nibali's still, you know, just sitting on Pino, Pino's trying to close this gap, but 
it was an interesting an interesting climb for all involved to be honest because it really did look like that Thibaut Pino was the weakest at this point because you're just like surely like he's leaning on Nibali a lot Nibali was doing a lot of work but I think ultimately Nibali did too much work and Quintana was 3.6k to go you can see here Pino says you know what boy cheerio I'm going and attacks around this hairpin and Nibali's like grinding a lot and just looks like he can't really come on terms and Pino again does that last little attack Nibali drops his head cheerio like he obviously is riding full but there's that point when you're riding you know 110 percent 115 percent of threshold to get him back to get on his wheel because then you know if you can hold on his wheel then it's going to be easier but now he knows he's away he's just going to settle you know maybe drop the watts for a little bit and then just settle into the you know really hard like yeah, pretty much threshold and just you know go full um and that's the thing it's psychologically as soon as you break them then you know everyone just rides threshold and whoever's got the best watts per kilo in terms of threshold on that day will, will win so you can see here he's pretty far down the cassette like he's, he's flying well on this climb um also another thing to put in the comments you think quintana looks a lot skinnier than like, now than he used to i mean like, i think his legs look maybe it's just camera angles have changed i don't know but his legs look significantly bulkier now than i mean obviously they're not big but compared to what he is now i reckon they're a little bit smaller his face looks is not as puffy now um, he's potentially on some well, he potentially just, I don't know, diet change. I know in the Movistar documentary, he said that he didn't have lactose and stuff. Maybe he found other things that he was allergic to, didn't have them, and just lost a little bit of weight that way due to inflammation. You can see here, Nibali is getting caught by Dimulan and Balka Monoma, um, who really, you know, them two did the ride of the day, in my opinion, because they just, you know, especially Dimulan, because, he, and well, both of them, they're good time trialists, and they know that if they just ride tempo, then that's all they need to do. Because, you know, Pino likes to attack, Pino needs to attack. His time traveling is not bad. At this point, it was pretty bad, but wasn't as bad as it used to be. Um, but yeah, Quintana is just on a different level today. Keeps putting time into people. 20 seconds now, 2 minutes 15 to Mario Rosa. And it's interesting, Thomas is almost back. Well, Thomas is back, it seems. Or maybe he's 4 minutes off, he's 2 minutes off there. But anyway, we come into the final kilometer. Quintana's put in a climbing clinic. Just said to everyone, you just need to attack, attack, attack. Put everyone in the bin, and then uh, you can win the stage. Nice old technical corner for the finale of Blockhouse, and we'll get to see the time gaps. And maybe they weren't as spectacular as people were expecting. He didn't put like two minutes into anyone, uh, apart from like Young Oz, but like he did enough to really show that he was the top top climber in this in this, um, in this Giro. Obviously, it didn't didn't end up going well for Nairo because there was a couple too many TT kilometers. Um, but yeah, I think it was yeah it was a very very solid performance. Again, a short stage. He always likes the short stages under four hours, um, and. Pino is a fair way back. Um, he's now with Demoulin, so Demoulin did one of the best rides. He managed to get up back to Pino, and obviously Pino's got a mad kick um, and going to get some bonus seconds. But Demoulin's job done. Now, how many seconds is he going to lose to Gintana? You know, not many. Maybe maximum 20, 30 seconds on one of the biggest mountaintop finishes that they're going to do. Um, you know, in terms of just like pure mountaintop, like not you know day after day after day, like just in terms of like one stage. Um, some finish you could lose a lot on that but um obviously we'll try and find some more footage um because there's some class class uh class stages of this Giro especially when Nibali wins on this dodgy descent um but we're just gonna wait for Nibali to come in and Nibali you know I think he did the worst on that day you know he tried to follow Quintana in hindsight it's very easy to say isn't it obviously he thought he had the legs but you know if he just stayed with Dimuna I'm sure he would have finished in the same same time as Dimuna because you know the amount of gaps he had to close the amount of, like work he had to do people say yeah it's a climb but everyone's doing the same what yeah but spiking your watts is very different and recovering is significantly harder on the body than just riding a steady tempo the whole way up so in hindsight i think he should have done that and you'll see now that nearly does do that he rides a bit more conservatively on the climbs because he knows he's not as good as climber as he used to be but his time trialing is still mega so anyway cheers for watching hope you did enjoy i'll see you next one